What up, Polly fam? It's your girl, Vita. Hey, how you doing? And I'm coming to you with another video. <laughs> and actually, this one is at, going to be from my wife heart to wives. So I don't want, uh, of course, I made another video yesterday, and it was from my wife heart to single women or women coming in dating uh, a married man who has a wife. But now I actually want to speak to the wives because I want to demonstrate that I see both sides, that I know that, um, you know, wives have a role. We have things that we have to do also. So, um, and that I'm not just, you know, down with secondaries or thirds or, you know, other significant others, you know what I mean? And, and, and I don't see things from their side also because, you know, they have a side and it needs to be acknowledged and recognized as well. And so, and I also want to start this with a, my own, uh, share a personal story about from my own personal heart uh, to show that I am human, I make mistakes, I am no poly guru, I'm not this hyper-evolved person. No, I wish. <laughs> no, not at all. So um, me and my husband were having an argument. It was about poly-related things. And um, I was, he, you know, he and I were going back and forth and it was getting very heated and he was becoming extremely emotional. I think he just kind of wanted to step away and take a chance to compose himself because dealing with emotions is much more difficult for him than it is for me. And so he was trying to walk away and, and just kind of, you know, go take a shower. And I said to him, no, you're going to stand here and you're going to talk to me. You're not going to talk to me. And I treated him like a child. I demanded that he talk to me. And so he responded by closing the door and locking it in my face. And instead of me going, okay, maybe he needs a moment, you know, that was wrong of me. I like totally freaked out and tried to break the freaking door down and crack the door open. And it cost us $45 to replace it because I literally broke the door. And this did not happen like a year or two ago. This was like a month ago. Okay, so if you can't listen to me um, because, uh, you know, I'm a human being, at least if you can't listen to what I'm telling you to do, you can listen to what I'm telling you not to do. Number one, do not break your bathroom door down because it's going to cost you $45. But, um, yeah, so I am human. I make terrible mistakes. I let my emotions get out of control. I don't have a handle on my jealousy. Absolutely not. I'm a human person just like you. But, uh, you know, there are some things that I do notice that I did do that uh, contributed to things not always being healthy. And um, I want to make sure that I can speak to your heart so that you can say, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't do this or maybe I shouldn't do that. And so I'm long-winded, so I want to kind of get this out there. And so uh, let me just go ahead and get started. Okay, first of all, Polly for you. Do not do Polly if you're doing it for your partner, saying, oh, well, I'm just doing this for my husband. My husband wants to do this, or my boyfriend wants to do this, or my long-term partner wants to do this, so I'm going to do it too. Polly is a very difficult thing to do. It's extremely challenging. It takes a lot of growth. It takes a lot of, of, of self-discovery. Uh, and um, if you're not having a vested interest in doing that because you're doing this for you, you're going to cause problems. You're going to have problems. You know, if your partner approaches you and says, you know, I want to try this out, you need to really sit down with yourself and take a good amount of time to really see, is this something that you want to do? And then you need to check in with yourself along the journey and say, do I still want to do this? Am I doing this for me? Because if you're not doing it for you, Polly is going to be really, 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 really hard for you. You know, you you have to, have to, have to be doing Polly for yourself. Uh, number two, don't attack his relationship with the other person. I did that so, so bad in our relationship. I mean, I would just lay into him sometimes for his relationship with her. And it was horrible. It made him feel so bad. I mean, I, I described it as, uh, you know, my husband was kind of walking through like a landmine, you know. And so, and I was the one who had the landmine map and I knew where the bombs were. You know, and so I would say to him, oh, yeah, 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 go ahead, step there, step there. There's no bomb there. And then he'd step there and boom, I'd blow everything up. And um, that's kind of the way it was for him. You know, I would say, oh, yeah, I'm OK with this. Go ahead and do this, whatever. And I was totally not OK with it. And I would just make things just a nightmare for him and his relationship with her. And so it was hard for him because it looked to him like his relationship with her was destroying his relationship with me, which was super important to him because we had been together for like 11 years and we have children together and we have this whole shared history. And, you know, and I just made his relationship with her a nightmare. And that was not fair. Like, you know what I mean? If you agree to do this, do it. Do the work. No one's forcing you to be here. Nobody's holding a gun to your head. If you're saying, we're going to do this, I'm going to allow you to do those things. Figure out how the hell to get yourself to the place to where you can allow him to do those things. Talk about your fears. Talk about your insecurities. Be vulnerable. Be constructive. Put yourself in his shoes. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Do the work. You know, learn how to do this. Join Polyforms. Read Poly books. You know, 
take hard looks at yourself and your own personal security so that you can communicate your needs to the partner. Say, I need you to do this in order to keep help me to feel, you know, this way. And, you know, this these are the things that I need from you. Do the work that you need to do. Don't say, hey, yeah, we're going to do this. And then you're being an asshole pretty much the entire time. That's not fair. Okay, <laughs> It's just not fair. Number three, see her side, uh, especially in triad situations. This is a human being. This isn't a toy. This isn't a sex toy. You know, this is a human being. They have feelings. They have needs. They have wants. They have desires. They deserve respect, compassion, consideration, care. You know, see the other person's side. How would you like it if an outside person was uh, controlling your relationship with your partner? If you wouldn't like it, chances are they probably wouldn't like it either. So you need to really... Get outside of your feelings, get outside of your ego and put yourself in that person's shoes. And I know it's very easy to say, well, you know, she ain't got no rights. You know what I mean? I'm the wife, but that doesn't work in poly. Mm -mm, not at all. They're a human being. If they're a human being, they have rights and you need to respect those rights. Uh, number four, in triad situations specifically, do not let your negative feelings about their interaction with each other, your husband's interaction with your girlfriend or whatever you're calling the person come in, get in the way of you having positive feelings for your girlfriend. I did that so much because I was feeling so much discomfort in their relationship. I let that get in the way of my loving feelings for my girl. And so it caused problems in our relationship, which made things exacerbated the problem because she was like, well, dang, you know, from him, I'm getting love and care. But from you, all I'm getting is, 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 you know, negativity, negativity, because I was letting my negative emotions about their relationship get in the way of having any positive emotions for my relationship with her. That is your partner too. You can love her too. She's there to love you too. You can enjoy your relationship with her as well. Instead of getting all upset because they're having a good relationship, focus on trying to have a good relationship with her too because she's there for you too. And I understand that there are instances where you get into the situation and the woman seems like she likes both of you, but then she starts to gravitate towards a husband. That does happen. But I think a lot of times why that happens is because people have a tendency to go to the place of path of least resistance. If she's feeling a lot of resistance from you because you're all in your feelings about her exchange with your husband and stuff like that, then yeah, she's going to gravitate forward and it's going to seem like they have a, a, a more positive relationship because between you two, there's all this you know, because you're dealing with all these negative emotions. So try to step outside of the, the negative feelings and the discomfort that you feel for their relationship in order to enjoy your relationship with her because she is your partner too. Number five, NRE. Especially in a long-standing relationship. When we got our girlfriend, um, we were together for like 11 years. So the, the new and shiny had wore off our relationship long, 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 long time ago. But this relationship is new. Yes, it's going to look, you know, a lot more energetic and stuff. Uh, than your relationship with your partner because it's new. You have to keep that in your mind because you know what? You're going to go through your own phase of NRE and that doesn't abdicate your, par abdicate your partner from uh, personal responsibility and recognizing that and seeing that because as a wife, you can kind of have an old shoe feeling. It's like, you know what? Well, I feel like an old shoe. I feel like the old blanket, you know, but that's not technically a bad thing from the way my husband explained to me. He was like, he likes that comfortability. He likes that we have a stability that we have, you know, what we have is stable and it, and it, and it, it's strong, you know what I mean? It, it's older. You know, that's something that he appreciated about our relationship. And so you have to kind of remove your feelings from it and see it what it is. It's not that he loves the other person more than you or there's just so much more. The relationship is just newer. It'll eventually wear off. You know, yes, it's hard, hard, hard to stay in that and to see that, you know, but, you know, have some perspective. Uh, number um, six, if you're poly and you're also poly too, you have the same choices. So if he's out there, he's got another partner he's dating, you can do the same things too. You need to remember that. It's like, okay, well, if he's texting her and you're feeling some type of way, you can text your other partner. You know, you have those same choices. So you can't get upset with him for doing these things when you have the ability to do those things too. You know, you can't afford liberties. You can't take liberties that you're unwilling to afford. So you have to think about that. If I'm unwilling to afford this liberty, I shouldn't be taking it. So, you know, you can't say, okay, well, I can do this and I can do these things and I can go on dates and I can text my partners, but you can't do this or I'm going to, you know, have these big emotional reactions every time you do this. It's not fair. Uh, number seven, make sure your needs are met. As long as you can say, my partner is meeting my needs, my partner is doing what they need to do to keep my relationship with them strong, whatever they do outside of that. That's your business. Like, you know what I mean? Honestly, just that's just a reality. So that that's really the only thing that you can demand from your partners is, hey, do the things within reason 
to keep our relationship strong. And as long as you can say that that person is doing that, you know, you're just going to have to kind of let it be, you know what I mean? And kind of have to work on yourself. Uh, number eight, you're going to have to learn to not view you guys as a unit, especially in our, our hetero, monogamy, monogamy, <laughs> hetero, uh, normative monogamous culture, we see married people as a unit. We see married people as two people that are like joined at the hip. They're like Siamese twins. Well, when you become poly, what's the scariest thing about poly is that you start to move away from that and you start to see your partner and your husband or wife as a separate individual. And that can be really scary, you know. And so you're going to have to start making that shift to saying, okay, you know, we're not a unit. He is a different person. He has different needs. He has different wants. He has different ways of doing things. You have to kind of start to make that shift. And that's not a bad thing. It really isn't. You know, it doesn't mean that you're not together anymore. It doesn't mean that, you know, that's the beginning of the end. It just means that you're, you know, you're shifting and you're, you're, you're starting to, um, recognize the autonomy of your spouse, which you should be doing. And Paula, you have to recognize your spouse's autonomy, have to let them make their own choices, which is a really, really scary thing to do, but it's good. Uh, number nine, cultivate compersion. Cultivate compersion. Conversion. Some people feel compersion naturally. Some people don't. I'm not a person who naturally feels compersion. I'm going to keep it real. I had to learn. I had to learn. I had to work on cultivating compersion. I had to say, okay, this is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling negative about Lee, about this. What is the positive side of this? How do I feel positively about it? You know, if my partner is happy with their other partner, they're going to come back to me happy. If they have happiness and more happiness and love in a person's life begets more happiness and love. And if you're a supporter of them having happiness and love, then they're going to feel happy and loving about you. So if they're getting happiness and love in this other relationship and then they're coming back to you and all they're getting is negativity and, and you know, bleh, rah, 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 you know, they're not really going to feel very happy and loving in their relationship with you, especially if they're getting it from the other place, but they're not getting that from you. So it's best if you figure out how to be happy and loving and, and cultivate compersion. Find ways to cultivate compersion. Join some poly forums, read some poly books on ways to cultivate compersion. Just try to see things differently. I actually have a journal where I would write down some very strong feelings that I had. And then I would say to myself, okay, you know, I'm feeling this way. This is the situation. This is how it's making me feeling, how making me feel. This is why it's making me feel the way it's feeling. And then what can I say to myself to make myself feel differently? Learn to start shifting your emotions and stop seeing these negative things as negative and start seeing them as positives. Um, talk to your metamor. Now, you know, this one is one of those ones that's like, oh, you know, some people just aren't comfortable talking to their metamors and that's totally okay. You need to answer that question for yourself and say, you know what? I don't really want to have a relationship with my metamor and that's your right. You know, but... You know, instead of treating this person like, you know, this kind of person out in the environment, get to know them. You know, the known entity is less scary than the unknown entity. You might find out that they're a wonderful person. I went to a poly uh, forum or something one time and had this lady talking. And she uh, she said that, you know, when she dates people, she likes to meet their spouses right away. And so she went to happy hour with uh, one of her partner's spouses and she started talking to the woman. Her and the partner aren't even together anymore. Her and the spouse, the metamorph, they're best friends to this day. You would never know, uh, you know, what may happen if you actually just sit down and talk to that person, talk to them about their fears, hear their fears, because you know what? The other person coming in, they have fears. They fear that they're just a fun time. They don't understand why the partner wants them if they have this good relationship with you. They have their own fears. They have their own insecurities. It's not like they're just going, oh, you know, they have their own sit down with each other and talk about it. Sit down and negotiate with each other. You know, this is how I, I how you can help me. This is how I can help you. Try to have a loving relationship with your metamor, a partnership with your metamor, because that will go along long way into helping you feel comfortable with that person when you know that they're not trying to hurt you. You know, you have to kind of think, my husband is not trying to hurt me by doing this. My metamor or my partner, you know, whatever, if it's a trial situation, they're not trying to hurt me. Okay, you have to kind of remember that, that, you know, they have their own motivations and they're not to hurt me. Don't take it personal. Uh, number 11, no one can steal your partner. You know, they may be the catalyst or they may create an environment, but your partner made the decision to walk away. And it's much easier to blame this other person and say, it's them, it's them, it's them, than to blame your partner because you love your partner and you want your partner to, to, to love you. You don't want to face that realization that your partner, you know, walked away from you because they wanted to walk away. It's just much easier to place that blame on the other person, but that's not real. That's not true. If your partner walks away from you for this other person, they made that choice. The person didn't steal them because they don't belong to you. They're a human being. They made a choice to walk away. 
And lastly, you made the choice to be Polly. Nobody's got a gun to your head. Nobody forced you to do this. If you said, I am going to be Polly, I'm going to do this, then you need to remind. And, I, and, any, and towards the end, I had to kind of remind myself that in times when I was feeling some type of way, I said, Vidi, you know, no one's forcing you to be here. You chose to do this. And if you chose to do this, you need to do the work to be in this space that you chose to be in. So the video is 15 minutes long. I try, but there's a lot to say. And there, I have a lot to say on this topic. Um, and I'm super passionate about it. And I'm super passionate about helping people learn how to navigate poly relationships successfully. Because when they are navigated successfully, they can be a very, very beautiful, wonderful thing. They can enhance your life in so many wonderful ways. You learn so much about yourself. You grow so much as a person. You know, but um, some of the, the, the drama and all the stuff that happens is really, really, really unavoidable. So anyways, I'm going to shut up. Uh, I will talk to you guys later. If you stayed through this entire video, you're a freaking rock star, and I love you. Um, goodbye.